Hello, my name is Daniel Pink. I'm a contributing editor at Wired, and this is a presentation using a technique known as Pachachka. I learned about Pachachka during a recent stay in Japan, and I write about it in the September issue of the magazine. Let me explain a little bit about that first before launching into the presentation itself. Pachachka was started by Mark Dytham and Astrid Klein, two architects in Tokyo. Since architects there didn't really have a place to show their work, Klein and Dytham opened up a performance space they owned for that purpose once a month. But to rein in the architects and designers' wordiness, they imposed some rules. Presenters could use only 20 slides, and each slide could be on the screen for only 20 seconds. That's it. They called it pachachka, which is the Japanese word for chatter, and which you see here. 20 slides, 20 seconds. That's what I'm doing here. And if I'm doing it right, you should be looking at slide number three. I've numbered them. And a minute should have passed since I started. Close. Now, doing a Pachachka presentation about Pachachka was a little too postmodern for me, so my presentation is about something else. It's about signs. I'm somewhat obsessed with signs. I've even made a special visit to the American Sign Museum, which you see here in Cincinnati, to see its collection. Now, some signs are beautiful, and some are weird, but many of the signs we encounter in our day-to-day -day life have a flaw. They could be a lot better, and if we make them better, the world could be a slightly better place. But what I'm talking about here isn't changing their shape or their color or their font. It's making signs more emotionally intelligent. To understand what I'm talking about, it helps to think about the main purposes signs serve in our public spaces. One purpose is to help people find their way. That means signs like this one, which I took in O'Hare Airport. I needed to go from the C terminal to the F terminal. This sign told me how. The key to improving wayfinding signs is to make them clear, understandable, and direct. But there's another kind of sign with another kind of purpose, and that's like this one that you see here. Uh, these signs convey the rules of behavior in public spaces. And Here's, here's an example, as I said. Um, they set out the rules and try to get us to comply. And here is where I think we can improve. I'm convinced that if these kinds of signs had greater emotional intelligence, they would improve our experience in places. Uh, in particular, these signs could do two things. They could demonstrate empathy, and they could encourage empathy. Let me give you an example. Not too long ago, my family and I were at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. We were having a great time, but everyone got hungry. We went upstairs to the cafeteria. The line was huge. I totally stressed out. I couldn't believe we were going to waste our time waiting for food. And then I saw this sign here. Don't worry, this line moves really quickly. My cortisol level went down. And I saw other people responding to this sign in a very, the very same way. They'd be all stressed out upon seeing this line. They'd see this sign. Their stress level would go down because the truth is the line wasn't that long. It was misleadingly long. And this sign, which said, we empathize with you, changed the experience. Here's another example. Um, I'm in a bathroom, in a movie theater, I pee, I wash my hands, I go to dry them. There are these things here, hand dryers, electric hand dryers. I hate them. They never work. I always have to end up drying my hands on my pants. But then I saw the sign, which I want to show you in a little closer detail there. We don't like them either, but they're the most energy efficient and environmentally friendly choice. Hmm. You feel my pain. Now, this sign isn't explicitly about rules, but by demonstrating empathy, it changes and improves the experience. Let me give you another example. Back in May, I was in the Hong Kong airport for the first time. I'm coming down the escalators, looking for the trains to baggage claim, um, and I see this sign. Relax. The train comes every two minutes. Now, I kept seeing these trains leaving, and I'm totally stressed out, but this, this sign demonstrated empathy with my predicament as a foreigner coming into a, a place I'd never been before. It was reassuring, emotionally intelligent by demonstrating empathy. Now, remember, there are two kinds of emotionally intelligent signs, those that demonstrate empathy and those that encourage empathy in the people who are looking at the sign. That's what I want to talk about now. And again, I want to just give you another example from my own experience. I live in Washington, D.C. We have a lot of people in this neighborhood who walk dogs. Uh, uh, down the street is a church with a big lawn. Lawns, dogs, not a good combo. So they put up this sign. Actually, this is a doctored version of that sign. Um, pretty half-acidly doctored version of the sign, I might add. Pick up after your dog. It's a command from an anonymous figure. No context. Okay? But here's the sign they really put up, which I think is more emotionally intelligent. It says, children play here. Pick up after your dog. Now think about that for a second. Why did it include that first line? 
I think it was to trigger empathy in those dog walkers. Pick up after your dog, or all the kids who play here, maybe yours, are going to get sick. I'm convinced that a sign like this, which has the same rule, gets greater compliance with the rule. Here's another example from the Vietnam Memorial uh, here in Washington, D.C. Um, they don't want people trampling on the lawn, so they put up this sign. This is, again, a doctored version of it, but this is a typical sign that you would see in this kind of setting. Set out the rule, follow the rule. Instead, they did something more emotionally intelligent with the signage in this place. They added a line, a line of context, a line to promote empathy in the people there. Now, believe me, here in America, you're going to have far fewer people veering off the sidewalk if this is what the sign says. People are empathic. They'll understand the reason. And you might even get other people to enforce the rule. Hey, bud, get off the friggin' lawn! Now, I've also seen cases where the signs that seem to be about empathy backfire. Here's one. Some works could hurt the sensibility of visitors. I saw this in a modern art museum in, in Paris. This makes me want to go in. It doesn't empathize with my sensitivities. It makes me actually want to go in and see this offensive kind of art. Let me give you one more example. I'm in a crowded restaurant in New York. It's cramped around a table where you give your name, and I see this sign, be nice or leave. It's not about the rules. It's about saying, hey, if you be empathic with the situation that's around you, everyone's going to be better off. Don't be a jerk. Understand your fellow person. And what it does is it changes truly the experience of being in that place. Well, that's it. A little bit behind time. Emotionally intelligent signage is a very modest suggestion. Toss into the public domain. It's yours if you want it. You can find out more about Pachachka at that URL. You can find me at that uh, email address, and you can read lots of great stories in this month's Wired. I'm Daniel Pink, and I'm out of time.